world building, setting, the time and place of our story, all of that can often seem like background information, just the backdrop of our story world. And for some novels, that's maybe all it really is. But if you really want to create a story world that your readers want to just step into and they wish they could live there, where your characters really come alive, then you need to spend some time thinking about your world building. And this is not just for magic systems and big fantasy worlds. There's a lot of world building that goes into small town contemporary stories or cozies or detective stories or horror. Even if your setting is just one single haunted house, there's still a lot of world building that you might need to think about. Of course, if you are writing an epic fantasy or a multi-book series, there might be more world building involved, especially if there's magic or paranormal. But what we're going to talk about today is this idea of world building, what it is, what you need to take into consideration, how much of it you need to have planned before you start your book, setting, which is more just the time and place and environment your story takes place in more specifically, and then also description. How do you describe this world once you get into your book? So if you're excited for this, I am too. It is Preptober 2023, and we're going to talk about some world building. First things first, world building is really everything about your story world that affects your characters or that your readers need to know in order to get what's happening in this story. So that's literally everything, not just this house that your character is sitting in, but it's the culture that your character lives in. It's the population. So for some books, it's even the geography or the technology. It's the history of the place, the wars of a place. It could be the weather that happens here. It could be the supply chain and economics. It could be the religion, the language literally everything that comes into your story. And of course, how deep you go into that is really going to depend on your genre and your particular story. There are some stories that happen everything in one tiny room, and then there are stories that take place across multiple generations. So it's going to depend on you how much world building you need to do. And sometimes we're going to discover that as we go through the story. So don't freak out and think that you have to have all of this figured out before November 1st or before you start writing your book, because that is not true. When we talk about setting, though, we're talking more about what's the time period this is set in or the temporal setting. What is the actual location? So what's the place that this is set in? And this can be a uh, country. It can be the city or town, and it could be even just which rooms or which house this is happening. So it could be a very specific interior setting, or it could also include the world setting itself or the environment, which is sort of a grander view of the weather and types of things that are affecting your character's world on a bigger scale. Sometimes people will also include psychological setting, meaning because so much of our stories often happen inside the mind of a certain character, sometimes their psychology can also be a setting of its own. We're not even going to dive into that into this video. We're going to pay attention more to things external to our characters, like time and place or location. Description, obviously, is just how we describe that with words on the page. So we're using our five senses here and we're showing what do we see? What do we hear? What's the smell of this place? What is the feeling or general tone of it? And what are the textures and the things that we can move around or touch? And so all of this stuff is going to play a part in our world building. Now, if you're new to this channel and you aren't familiar with me and you're wondering, okay, well, what's your expertise on world building? My name is Sarah Cannon. I am the author of 27 novels, almost finished with book number 28. I just finished my second round of edits on that book. And I have written mostly young adult contemporary portal fantasies. So that means part of my stories happen here in our contemporary world, but with speculative elements like witches, paranormal ghosts, like different things like that, depending on the story. And then most of my stories include some kind of portal to another world. So my popular Shadow Demon Saga goes from our contemporary world into a portal to a place called the Shadow World, which is a fantasy world filled with shadow demons. But it's not just fantasy or speculative type stories that have world building to them. I also am the author of the Fair Hope series, which is a completed new adult contemporary series set in a small town in Georgia. And this 
still has a lot of world building because it has to do with the characters, their relationships to each other, the culture of that town, and a lot of other things like their economics and the history and the culture of that place. And so there's still a lot of world building that goes into contemporary stories in terms of building up the town or the tone or the environment and history and the rich location of an area. So don't count yourself out of world building just because you're writing contemporary stories. So those are just a few examples of what I've written. And at this point, I have sold over 1 million copies of my books. Yay. <laughs> and that is a recent uh, milestone that I've achieved. And so I do have quite a bit of experience at creating worlds. So what we're going to talk about first is what does world building entail? And how much of it do you need to know before you start your story? Sometimes people get setting and world building confused, but really setting is just one piece of of your world building. So the world building is everything about your character's world in terms of their history, the politics, potentially the rules of this world, especially if we're talking about a magical system, the locations and the actual physical buildings, the layout of your town or the layout of your country could be the geography. It could be the animals or creatures, nature, magic, the weather, culture, trade and supplies, language, the religion of a place, the population of a place, their beliefs, their myths, conflicts or wars, economics, all of these types of things go into your world building. But how deep you go into this and how much of this you actually need to know really depends on the type of story that you're writing. So if you already have decided a few things about your story, or even if you've already begun plotting your story, one of the first things you're going to do is go high level with where is this story taking place? So a lot of times when we're world building, we start with setting. So we say, where is this happening on a big level? What country is this in? Is this a made up place? Is this a fantasy world? What type of fantasy world is this in terms of, is it a high fantasy world where there are elves and dwarves and it's very Lord of the Rings? Or is this more of a fairy world? What are we looking at here? Another question when it comes to world building is when is this story taking place? Is it happening in a contemporary time period or is it set in the 1950s in Oklahoma? That is going to have a very different feel and the level of research and detail you're going to need to put in there in order for your reader to really feel like they're a part of it is going to be very different. So if you're writing just a contemporary New York City, a lot of people in the world are already going to be familiar with what a New York City looks like and feels like from television, movies, and other books that have been around. However, if you're writing Medieval Castle, you might have to put in more detail as to exactly which time and place and what's the politics and the culture like there so that people will understand the motivations and why your characters are reacting to certain things the way that they are, because people were very different. Technology is another piece of world building. Technology was very different in medieval times. A lot of times too, even if you are writing something that is fantasy and something that is not set in our real world, if it's even a fantasy world, if you look at something like Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones, those authors were still anchoring their stories in history here in our world. And so you might have something like Game of Thrones that's based on something like medieval times and the culture of that time, but it's set in a fantasy world. So that author is able to draw elements from history, real life history, and then weave in his own elements to that story. And the same thing is true when we're writing any type of fantasy or paranormal or speculative things like science fiction or horror or witches or anything like that is that we often will base it in a world that we understand as readers that most people will understand. And then we weave those magical and fantastical elements on top of those things. So a lot of that beginning stage of world building is just saying, what type of world are we dealing with here? And then asking yourself, I'm going to give you a list here at the end of this video that you can grab from Google Docs that I made just for things to think about when you're world building in terms of religion, technology, and all those things I listed earlier, if you want to be able to reference that. And just start asking yourself, which of these pieces 
do I think right now before I start writing are going to affect my characters or my story world in some way? Are my characters going to need to travel across the United States? And if so, how much of that weather or culture or situation do I need to understand? So for example, I have a series called the Eternal Sorrow series. It's another portal fantasy, but part of the, but the majority of the books take place here in the United States, but it's after the zombie apocalypse. So we have a post-apocalyptic scenario, which is our characters are making a trek from the DC area to New York City. And so I had to do some research and world building, not based on what is actually happening in the world, but what people think would happen if we lost access to phones and internet and that kind of thing. And that was super, super fun to be able to do that. But it was anchored, of course, in our everyday world. And then I had to weave these imaginary things on top of it based on other people's predictions, things we've seen in movies and things that readers would already be familiar with. So as you go down that list and you think about the story that you're trying to create and the world where this is set, I want you to start to make lists of things that would potentially affect your story. So is there going to be something about the actual land itself that is going to play a role in your story? So this could be that there's like in my Shadow Demon Saga, there are woods surrounding the house where my main character goes to live at the very beginning of the series. And those woods and the earth around it are filled with this sort of magical energy that she draws from. And so that becomes a part of the culture of this world. And I needed to explain the way that that felt and the way those woods looked and how dense they are. So that's the first things first. We start with the big picture of where is this happening? When is this happening? Which is going to tell you how much research you may have to do into a historical time period if you need. Or is there any historical time period that is playing a role in what's happening in my story, even if it's contemporary? Then you can start to drill down more specifically into these specific categories like religion and technology. Now, this is where the procrastination can come in is that sometimes we can start brainstorming lots of things about, oh, the technology, the religion, the language, the people, and some of this stuff will make it onto the page and some of it won't. So I think that one of the warnings I have for you about world building is do as much as feels necessary for you. Use your intuition, but also be self-aware that you're not spending just six months a year doing nothing but world building and not actually writing your story unless that was your intention. So put some time limits onto your world building and remember that you don't have to have all of this figured out before your story begins, that you can also start writing. And then as you're writing, you're going to come across things that you're like, oh, I guess I'm going to have this setting here that's this hospital in DC. What does that hospital look like? What's the floor plan? And then you'll have to do some extra research as you're writing. So be open to both. What do you need to know ahead of time to get started? And then how much of this will you begin to figure out as you write? Now, as you start asking yourself, like, what are the politics of this area? What's the language of this area? Some of it might come to you really easily because you've already put a lot of thought into the characters that you have and the setting might already play such a huge role in terms of maybe it's set in Africa and you know, know certain types of languages that you need and certain types of geography or culture or history or war or politics that you're going to have to deal with because it's written into your plot and you know know that your readers are going to need to understand it before they can understand your character's motivations or the stakes of the story. But there's also going to be situations where you're like, I don't know, I'm setting this in a fictional small town in the middle of Texas, and there's not really a lot of world building because I don't want to bring politics and everyone here speaks English. So there's not a lot of language. Maybe there's some dialect here that I might want to pull in, but really it's just the culture of this small town. And so something you can think about from the beginning is what is the scope of my world? building? How big is this world? How many locations is it going to take place in? And where do I need to focus in? And then go down this list and think, which of these things do I immediately know are going to play a role in my world in terms of my character's world? And world building really is all about making sure that your readers understand what's happening and why your characters are doing the things they're doing or why this environment is affecting your characters in this way. And like I said, that's going to come down to the type of story that you're writing. 
So as you go through this list, just give that high level opinion of, okay, this is definitely going to be important. This is not important. This is important. And I need to start making some decisions and go ahead and write down everything that you already know you either need to research or that you need to decide and any decisions you've already made so far so that you have a starting document. This can be something that I feel is better to do in digital format rather than writing down just because you're going to expand on these ideas and you want to make sure that you don't lose them on just some random sticky notes or anything. So I'd recommend either starting a Google Doc or a Word Doc or opening up Scrivener and doing your world building in some kind of digital document so that you don't have to constantly erase or be writing in the margins or deleting things and so forth. Another important thing to think about when it comes to fantasy or science fiction or anything that is not set specifically in uh, the real world that most readers would be familiar with is what are the rules of this world? When you start talking about magic systems or space travel, or even just if we're sitting in a lab in a computer lab with a set of chemistry people, what are the rules of this particular setting or this particular world that govern my character's actions, my character's power, my character's agency in this world? What are the rules here? Now, when it comes to magic rules, I am not going to be able to go into how to create an entire magic system in this particular video, but I will point you in the description to some other resources that will help you with magic systems, just because it can be really tough to create magic systems and it can be tough to make sure that they're balanced and that they work and that the rules are consistent across a series. So that would be probably a, a potential entire series here on YouTube, but I will link some good resources that are a good place to start. But if you are going to have a magic system, like in my shadow demons world, witches use shadow demons as batteries for their magic and there are gemstones and there are, you know, different types of creature magic and different things like that that get used through that series and I had to build that system in a way that felt like it was consistent and it was realistic. In my Eternal Sorrow series, it's elemental magic. And so going back to other stories that use elemental magic, like certain anime or even cartoons like The Last Airbender or other types of series that have strong elemental magic was a great resource for me to see what other authors have done and then turn it and make it my own. But that is also a great resource is reading other books in your genre like fantasy to sort of understand understand how that world building works or how those rules work. So once you have that high level view, you start to narrow down and you start to look at each of the individual pieces of your world building and also setting. So this is probably one of the most important pieces of your world building is the specific setting of your book. So setting is, like I said, it could be the environment. So it could be everything that's around your character's world, like geographically or the location, but it can also be a very specific setting like inside a house or inside someone's office. And so we've got multiple layers potentially of setting. So we have maybe this room, we have the house as a whole, we have the grounds outside of it, then we have the city, and then maybe you're also going to see the state. So sit and think about in this book so far, when I think about the plot that I have laid out, how much how many layers of setting do I need? Specific setting all the way out to a bigger setting. Now with my Shadow Demon Saga in the first book, we see the interior of Harper's room, her high school. We see the town of Peachville, but we don't really see outside of Peachville. She has some memories of her life in Atlanta, but we don't really have a physical setting on the page outside of the town of Peachville. And there are very specific settings there, like the grounds of Shatterford Home for Girls and her high school. And that's most of where the book is set. And so it's easy to just take one single sheet in my Google Docs and say, here's Shatterford Home for Girls. And I'm going to write out everything that I know. Something else I really love to do is to go onto Pinterest and create a Pinterest board that's called Shatterford Home for Girls or Harper's Bedroom or Harper's High School and find other images on the web that remind me of the type of place I'm trying to build. 
these visual images help me to then figure out how I'm going to describe how is my setting or my high school slightly different from this one? What do I need this high school to be set up like in order for the events of my story to happen? So for example, there's a big important event that happens at a football game. So I know I need a football stadium. I need a parking lot because that's where she meets with Jackson for the first time. So there's going to be specific settings that you'll need and you can either jot those down as you're writing and then and make note of how you've described them so you can stay consistent over time. And that's more of a series Bible type action. Or you can figure all of this stuff out before and then reference it as you're writing. And in fact, I find that the more I can figure out within reason before I start writing, the easier the story is to write because it, I have to make less decisions as I'm writing. When I'm making decisions about character arc and plot and dialogue, I don't have to think about what does this high school look like and how is it set up. And I find that to help speed things along with my writing. Like I said, figure out how many layers you have to your story and then start with the biggest layer or the smallest layer and work your way backwards or forwards, depending on where you want to start. So let's say I'm going to start with the town of Peachville. This is a fictitious town, but it's based on the town I grew up in Hawkinsville. And so I could sit down and I could create a map and I could sit and think about what types of trees, sidewalks, what are the roads like here? How many people live here? And start doing that world building within my setting. So I'm going to think about Peachville and I'm going to think about all those aspects of world building religion, population, their past conflicts, the culture of the place, the racial makeup, the social norms. I'm going to think about all those things. How many people go to the local high school? How many people still live there that went to high school there? Is it that kind of small town? How many people know each other? And how weird is it that this girl is coming from Atlanta to live here as like a in a home for troubled girls. Like how much of an outcast is that going to make her in this small town versus what it would have been like for her in Atlanta. And so really figuring all that out for the big town. And that does include like specifics of the setting, like the buildings and how tall are the buildings? How many apartments are there versus homes? Are there historical homes here? All of this stuff does come into play with the setting and the world building. And then once I have just brainstormed as much of that as possible, now I'm going to go to a more specific setting like the high school. And I'm going to start to think about what the layout of that high school is. What are the smells? Are there, is there a lot of grass? Is there astroturf? Are there tennis courts? What pieces of this might come into play. Like for me, when I started to envision that high school, I could see a statue of a demon. And I thought, oh my gosh, that statue matches one that's on the grounds of Shatterford. And how do these play into each other? So going through this process of figuring out your setting can not only be really, really fun and creative, but it can also start to give you ideas for what's going to happen in your plot. And this is where the magic starts to happen as well. Then you can go even more granular. So one of the most pivotal scenes in the first book of Beautiful Demons, of the Shadow Demon Saga, which is called Beautiful Demons, happens in the high school cafeteria. It's not a very long scene. It's a pretty short scene. And I don't even get into too much description of what's happening in that scene, but you get an idea of the way the tables are set up, how the girls come into the room, how Harper has to cross in front of the popular girls table to get to put her lunch tray away. We get all of that stuff because because I could see it in my head as terms of where she's sitting, how the tables are arranged and how that room is arranged. And then you can begin to map out those specific locations. So I would have the high school cafeteria. Then I also have Harper's bedroom and I have the entire woods that surround Shadowford and what does the kitchen look like and where does she eat her breakfast? So start to think about all the small locations where your story takes place or where your characters are going to appear. In the current book that I'm writing, it's called The Disappearance of Vanessa Shaw. The setting is very, very small. So everything happens in this story, in the present timeline, in this one location of a cabin on the river in the woods. And everything that happens in the past timeline happens in and around that cabin or in the town itself where they live. And so it's a very small setting. I didn't have to know a lot of things. There's just a few rooms uh, some woods, the river itself, and a few other locations. But it can be super helpful to create visuals of it to sit down and describe that. So let's talk a little bit about description. 
One of the best things that you can do for yourself when it comes to description is sit down with a Google Doc or whatever you have open for each location of setting in your book, the specific locations, and start to think about your five senses. So we're talking about sight. We're looking at the lighting of a room. We're talking about the visuals, the things that someone can actually see with their eyes. And that is going to not only paint a picture for the reader, but it's also going to give a tone of the location and the way that you describe it. We're gonna think about sound. So what is your character hearing? Are there birds in the forest or is everything dead quiet? Or is it a really noisy place like the football stadium? There's just people talking, there's cheerleaders, there's football players clapping, you know, all these different things, cars are honking. So think about the sounds, that's really also going to enrich your story a lot with the sounds of each setting. Think about the smell. So the smell inside Harper's room that's filled with antique furniture and dark mahogany might be very different than the smell out in the woods near this um, interesting magical location with this statue, right? So think about the smells and even the feel of things. So as she's walking through the woods, is there a light breeze blowing through the trees and you can hear the leaves rustling. So we also have things that we're hearing. So as you write down each location, mark down your five senses of sight, sound, smell, touch, and taste, and see if any of those start to bring up different descriptions about this area. Now, obviously taste is not gonna be something that comes up probably as often as what you see, but don't forget especially the smell and the sound and the texture and the way things feel to your characters because that is what is going to make this world feel real. So biggest tips before we go. Number one, I have left a Google Doc. I didn't put this into the Preptober planner, but I do have a 95 page Preptober and NaNoWriMo planner for you. If you want to grab it, you can just sign up for my newsletter list down below and I will send you that along with worksheets on how to plot a novel, how to edit a novel and so on. But I didn't put this setting worksheet or Google Doc in there for you because I wanted you to do it digitally instead of writing it out by hand. So I have created that. So go check it out. It's linked down below in the description of this video. You will just click on that Google Doc link and it will take you to a page where you can make a copy of it so that you can use it for yourself or you can print it out or whatever you need to do. But that is going to have some of these basics of the world building and setting and some questions that you want to ask yourself. But I want to leave you with a few tips before we go. Number one, start high level. Where is this set? When is this set? What in the world does my reader need to know or understand about this world in order to understand the sequence of events and my character motivations? That's where you start. Second, think about the central conflict of your story and the specific settings of each scene in your story that you know so far and go down the list and figure out which pieces of world building and setting you are going to need to start with in your story in order for you to start writing and write as start as high level as you can and then narrow yourself down to where you're describing the sounds, the sights, the feel, the touch, the taste of everything that's happening in that location. And that's going to help you write faster once you get started. But another big tip is you do not have to have all of this figured out before you start. Have fun with it. Figure out as much of it as you can within reason. Don't procrastinate doing it, but just figure out however much feels intuitive to you. And then it will naturally weave itself into the story. But my next tip is that as you begin writing, make sure that you have some sort of method to capture the questions that you have as it comes up so that you don't have to sit down and research every little question. So let's say you had all these settings figured out and then suddenly a scene pops up where your character goes into a church and you did not have this church in your original world building or setting, but now you're thinking maybe religion and this specific church is gonna play a role and you don't have time during NaNoWriMo to sit and think through all of that. How are you going to make a note for yourself? Where are you going to note that down so that you know to do research later? I put those notes directly into my manuscript. I will do XX, capital XX, which then is something that doesn't occur naturally in my actual writing. So I can do a search and replace or a find all when I'm done with NaNoWriMo and I can search for XX. And that's gonna show me all the places in my Google Doc that I have questions that need to be researched. So I might not describe this church very much except what comes to my imagination as I'm writing. 
but I'll put XX describe this church or figure out what religion this is or how this plays a role. And then I'll go back in my editing and do that so I don't stop the flow of my writing. And finally, give yourself permission to put as little or as much world building as you feel is necessary for your story. Some people are writing literary or high fantasy and they love the world building. So if you read Robert Jordan, who's one of my favorite authors, literally everything from the character's braids to exact clothing of each culture within that story in The Wheel of Time is described in detail. It's a lot of world building, a lot of description, and it's very helpful throughout the story to understand that, oh, that's this kind of person or that person's from here or they're one of these people. And that has is a way to connect this really big story world. But if you read Orson Scott Card, there's almost no description. It's very light handed when it comes to the description, but you still can see this world vividly through the character's eyes. I also don't put a ton of detailed description into my books, but people still say they can see my stories happening like a movie in their mind. Even though I'm not describing every little detail of her strand of hair, sometimes I don't even say what character color hair they have or anything else about them. Sometimes I keep it really light and you, but you still get an idea of these characters. So feel free to do it the way that you best want to do it. Listen to feedback from your editors, but don't feel pressure to put in tons of world building. And in fact, sometimes too much world building can really slow your story down and make it more boring. So make sure that you're staying true to your pacing which we will talk about later in Preptober. A lot of information covered in this one short video, but I hope this was helpful. If you have any more questions about world building, which is such a huge topic, feel free to leave them down below and I will answer as many as I can. Also, if you're looking for a great course on world building, my friend Leslie Penelope has a course on world building that I would highly recommend to you. So I'm going to put her website and information for you down below as well. And don't forget to grab your free Google Doc, your free Preptober planner when you sign up for my newsletter. And don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and come back for more because we have lots of not only previous year's Preptober content, but also more to come in 2023. If you're looking for a craft book specifically about description or setting, this one is one that I started out with in my own writing journey years and years ago. So this is part of the Write Great Fiction series. It's called Description and Setting and it's by Ron Roselle. So I will link that for you down below. This doesn't go as much into like a lot of world building, but it does talk a lot about description, which I think is hard for some people. So I will link that for you down below as well. If you know of any other great world building resources other than the ones I've shared in the description, go ahead and put them in the comments. Let's help each other out and find success this nano. So I will see you in my next video. Bye for now. Mm.